Are you ready? Yes. Father God, this morning, we just come to say thank you. Uh, thanking you for another day, allowing us to get up and uh, still have our right minds and the action of our limbs. We thank you for this time that you allowed us to come together to worship you and to praise you and to study your word. We lift up our class today and especially our teacher, uh, work in her, Lord, a miracle that we will all witness today as she presents your word. We pray that your word will be hidden in our hearts that we might not sin against you. Direct us and keep us in your care. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done, for all that you're going to do, for blessing our families and keeping them safe, Lord. Uh, we thank you for just being who you are, for there's nobody like you. We pray for our world and the world things that are going on around us. Uh, we pray for the leaders that's in the office. We pray, Father, that they will listen to you and seek your face. Or you said that any man like wisdom to ask you and that you would give it to us. Uh, we thank you for our medical field that are searching for answers for cures of the world. But we know, Lord, that all healing comes from you. So we thank you today for what you're doing. And we just lift up our pastor this morning. We pray for him and his family. We pray for each one that is on the lesson this morning, our guests and those that are watching and listening. Uh, we ask that you would open up our hearts, that we will learn more about the gift of the uh, spirits that we are teaching this morning, that we can apply to our lives, that we encounter things that uh, that we throw us off our square. But if we keep our, keep your word in our hearts, we won't sin against you, Lord. So give us that script. Be with us and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dick and Brooks. They bring up our lesson. Yeah. Let me know you guys can see it. We can see it. I see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So we're continuing in the, uh, the fruit of the spirit goodness. So last week we talked about goodness and overcoming evil to so bring out so the evil that comes out in us we can overcome evil for good. We talked about how Paul talked about uh, wrestling with the flesh when he wanted to do good, evil was always present. It's a real struggle that we go through daily. But this is goodness part two, so we're going to go ahead and see how we can apply it in our lives and see an example of how we too can apply goodness to our lives every day. Thank you, uh, Deacon Brooks, for missing that in your prayers. Uh, the fruits of the spirit that we've learned thus far, uh, I pray that we are you know, applying those things uh, on a daily basis as best as we can because it is sanctification. We are growing in Christ. And so the fruit of the spirit, so the first screen is gonna be read by Bernard. Can everybody see that? Is it big enough? Yes, I can see. I'm sorry. Did you, who's reading this, uh, Teacher Mary? You. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't hear that name. Okay, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things. There is no law, Galatians 5, 23. Thank you, Vernon. So now we're on the sixth fruit. We're passing out on kindness. And kindness and goodness goes hand in hand. You have to be kind, but you also have to be good. So they go together. Uh, the next screen is going to be read by... Unmute yourself, Pat. Pat, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. The fruit of the spirit is goodness. Goodness is character energized, expressing itself in beloverance, active good. God is good. What God does is good because of the good it does. We are called to do good. People today are self absorbed 
and bored. They need to be part of something meaningful. Spend yourself, spend yourself, pour into others. <clears throat> Thank you, Penny. This is by Beth Moore. That's the saying, spend yourself, pour into others. Saying people today are self-absorbed and bored. And we see this every day. If you go into a store and someone is outside begging, the goodness of some people will stop and give the person a break. They're so self-absorbed on what they're doing and concentrating on what they're going to get that they're just passed by people. But some people will stop and actually pour themselves into that person. So I thought it was really good. It said, goodness is character energized, expressing itself in benevolence, act of good. So it means that you are doing something to help someone. God is good and what God does is good because of the good it does. So I, I thought that was really good for us to kind of think about when we're talking about the spirit of goodness. And please have many comments and questions when we're done. Sarah is the next person who's gonna read the slide. It's Christian's goodness. Can you hear me, Sarah? Yeah, yeah, I, I see it. Can you hear me? Yes. The Christian goodness. One, we should seek to be full of goodness, Psalms 34, 14. We have to make sure we do it and not have it. Psalm 37, three, goodness began in the church, Galatians 6, 10, Hebrews 10, 24. For goodness extends to our enemies, Matthew 5, 44. But anything other than doing good is sin, James 4.17. If you know what you are supposed to do and yet won't do it, not nothing, not, not doing what is good is a sin. Goodness is your life actually enables you to live long and endure a living, 1 Peter 3.10.11. Thank you. And I met you welcome. Something. The, to look up these scriptures for me. We know most of them. But can someone read uh, Psalm 34, 14? As soon as you find it, just unmute yourself. Someone read Psalm 37, 3, uh, Galatians 6, 10, Hebrews 24. And if someone comes in and read it, then you read Matthew 5, 44. And just unmute yourself as soon as you got it. You don't have to be in order because we all we got kind of sorted. James 4, 17, and then 1 Peter 3, 10, and 11. So if you want to just grab the scripture and unmute yourself and read it. Uh, the first one is Psalm 34, 14. Anyone have Psalm 37, 3? When it says, we have to make sure we do it as goodness, and not just have it. And Psalm 37, 3. Anyone? No? I have it. What? I have, okay, which I one have. are you reading? Tell us which one you're reading. I have the uh, New Testament, New, New James. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his fairness. What's, what's which one? 37.3. 37.3, okay. All right. Anyone have 34.14? We should seek to be full of goodness? I do. Okay. Uh, King James Version. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. I like this script. It said, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. That means that we have to actively pursue things. Anyone have Galatians 6 10? Uh, yes, I do, Mary. Thanks, uh, Mark. Uh -huh. It said, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Wow, thank you, Mark. Especially to Mark, you're supposed to especially be good to me. <laughs> of course, absolutely. I don't believe it. <laughs> that was the life application version, by the way, too. <laughs> thank you. Anyone have Hebrews 10 24? I do. This is Lillian. Thank Read you. The King James Version. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wow. Okay. Oh, you know what? I read uh, uh, 10 4. I'm sorry. I was supposed to read 10 24. Sorry. Let me go. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. 
us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Okay, thank you. Anyone have Matthew 544? Goodness is passed yeah. to our enemies. I have, I have Matthew. Oh. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, read it. Who's reading? Okay, I got this Teresa. I got Matthew 5:44. Thank you, Teresa. Okay, I'm reading out of King James. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully you use and persecute you. Amen. Thank you. Now that's a heavy scripture right there. When it comes to doing goodness, this you know that's challenging. But we as believers, we have to do it. We have to. But you read those words like, okay, God, help me, give me strength. But we can do it. Anyone has James four seventeen? I do. I do. Okay, right. Estella Baker. <laughs> okay, so it is sin to know the good and yet not do it. And I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and the last one, this in your life actually enables you to live long and enjoy living. First Peter 3, 10 and 11. Anyone has that? This is Jennifer. I have it. Thank you. I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. For the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He must mm -hmm. turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. Ooh, I like that one. That's a Christian version. I like that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which version was that, Jennifer? That's the New, New American Standard. New American Standard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you for reading those scriptures. And so we should be good. I mean, it's a process. There's something we have to work on. Again, what God just had to say about how we should be good, become good. Because remember, we're not good. There's not good. No, not one. Even though we may think we're good, Jesus said, no, not the only one that's good is God. All right, so the next uh, slide that we're going to read, thank you guys too for reading. The next slide we're going to have Betty McMurray. You know, he talked about the purpose of this. Betty? Okay, the purpose, the purpose of goodness is that we can be good towards others so that Christ's goodness can be shown through us to overwhelm the works of the flesh that we normally struggle with. God gave us the fruit of goodness so that we could conquer evil, not with force, but with goodness. The purpose of goodness is so that God can get the glory because it is evidence that any goodness that we have are good the good things that we do is not us, but is of God. Amen. 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 Thank you. So I like to say to overwhelm the work of the flesh that we normally struggle with. Anyone struggle with some pain? I mean, that's a norm. There's a fight. Paul talks about there's a fight every day. Every day we have to struggle to mm -hmm. be good, but we can do it because God, so God can get the glory if no other reason. <clears throat> Just get out and says, God, I want to give you some glory. So let me love my, and let me love that person who hate me. Let me do this for you, God, and he'll give us strength because we know that our strength comes from the Lord. The next slide we're going to read, and this is going to be Brandon, production of goodness. So how do we produce this goodness? Brandon? No, no, no. I'm sorry, Brandon. This is Mark. <clears throat> production of goodness. Goodness is being ruled by what is good so that if it is in you, it will come out of you. Its purpose is to overcome the evil within you so that you can do good to evil people. But how do we produce goodness? Romans 12, 1, 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Number two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The Holy Spirit produces goodness when our minds are transformed into the goodness of God. 
Jesus said in Mark 10, 18, there is none good but one, that is God. In order for us to produce good, we must be transformed by God into good. We are transforming to good when we present our bodies a living sacrifice. We are transforming to good when we live holy and acceptable unto God. We are transforming to good when we are not conforming to this world. We are transforming to good when we renew our minds to prove what is that, what is that good, acceptable and the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Luke 6, 45. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. Thank you, Mark. So how do we presume, how do we presume? Goodness. Romans 12, 1 and 2 tells us that. And I love the second part, but the first part, a different version said, I beg you, therefore, brethren, that the, by the benefit of you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and mm -hmm. to God, which is your reasonable service. And I think that's just awesome. He said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I ask God every day, God, renew my mind. Help me to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. And, you know, we always see the scripture, think of things that are lovely. And I can transform my mind just by thinking on that. Think of things that are good. If it has any virtue, think on these things. So we have to transform our mind by thinking of, of thinking of good scriptures that would get us in a good space where we'll be able to treat people well. It's so important. Uh, when I go someplace and I see uh, someone treat someone well, like you can always tell when someone is down on their luck. If someone is helping that person. It just does my heart good that that person will have mercy on them to even help them because a lot of people would pass you by. You know, I was thinking one day I was, one day I had a flat and I was stuck on the side of the road and several men, they came by just to ask me to help, to change my tie, you know, to help me. Not to flirt or anything, but they was there to help me and I didn't have a donut. They don't put donuts in new cars, I don't know who don't know that. But they didn't have a donut in my car. But it was just the idea that they would stop. And even one lady, how can I help? And I said, well, I don't know how to change the tie, Are you? But anyway, just the thought of her even stopping by and said, how can I help? You know, so the goodness of God, the goodness mm -hmm. of people, I can see it sometimes when I see people being generous. I know they're struggling of some of you in the grocery line and someone will have enough money and say, so, you know, don't worry about it. I'll pay a whole bill. And the people be so grateful that someone would step up and help them. I was in McDonald's and this young guy came in with his little family. His, him, his girlfriend, it could have been his wife and a baby in a stroller. He said, ma'am, could you please help us get something to eat? And I gave him $5, and you would have thought I gave him a million dollars. I wish I had more than that, but he was so grateful just to get that $5. And it just does, it just does my heart good that he, you know, that I was able to help them. So it's the goodness of God in us that comes out. He said, if it's in you, it'll come out. And I've seen that, and I just thank God, you know, that he give us that spirit of goodness to be able to reach out and help someone and not want anything back. Just that Holy Spirit said, so you know, we can help them. We know we can't help everybody, but the Holy Spirit will give us utterances to as to who to help. And that's a, that's a good uh, quality to have, mm -hmm. just right. from the heart. You know, it's from the heart. I don't want anything back. I'm just happy. I'm just glad I was here to help you. You know, so mm -hmm. being transformed by the renewal of your mind to do what is good and accept the perfect will of God. God's will is for us to do good. He wants us to do good. So we have to work on that uh, daily. You know, every, I'm not saying I'm good every day, but I do try. I try. I know I can become good. I'll go back to Reverend Watson, but I ain't going to go there today. <laughs> <laughs> but that helped me a lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So the next scripture we got, I mean, the next slide. I see goodness illustrated. And this is what Lydia is going to read. Lydia, you can read it out of your pipe if you like. You can't see this, you know, if the word's not good on the screen. Oh, I can see it. God's illustrated selfless care for others. The Good Samaritan, 10, 25 through 37. Uh-oh, you just shrieked it. <laughs> Let me go to the guy. Uh -uh. Hold on. Hold on. All right, let me let me bring it down. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Let me see what I did. Yeah. All right, hold on. I'm gonna have to go out. See if this will work. 
If you like, I could pull it up. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, goodness illustrated selfless care for others. The Good Samaritan. Luke 10, 25 through 37. On, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man who is, who, a man is going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the, the man, he passed by on the other side. So, too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring, at, pouring on pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took uh, took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for, for any extra expense you may have. You may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So this is goodness, selfless care for others. This is goodness illustrated by the Good Samaritan. So let's look at what he did. So we're going to go to this page and see what we can learn from the Samaritan. I think this is Brandon. Brandon? All right. I just had to unmute myself. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes, thank you. All right. Goodness illustrated, selfless care for others. The Good Samaritan, Luke 10, 25 through 37. What can we learn about goodness from the Samaritan? Number one, 
fruit of the spirit goodness involves compassion when we allow the holy spirit to flow through us we will have compassion on people in need will we listen to a co-worker who needs to bend our ear stop to help a family stranded on the side of the road spend time with a child who needs some extra attention number two fruit of the spirit goodness involves extravagant giving did you see it the samaritan poured oil and wine on the victim's wound an unexpected use of his costly supplies on top of that the samaritan gave the innkeeper two denarii two days of wages to use for the care of the man and told the innkeeper he would reimburse any extra expenses and number three fruit of the spirit goodness involves investment of time our good samaritan interrupted his journey and took care of the man at the end overnight surely he had obligations to fulfill and people waiting at the end of his trip yet he tended to the man overnight perhaps to make sure the man was stable before he continued on his journey not only that he promised to return and settle up accounts with the innkeeper on his way back through thank you brandon so look at the good you're welcome Samaritan. so it says goodness involved compassion so first you got to have you have to have the to have compassion on people it says would you listen to a co-worker or anyone who needs to bend your ear will you stop to help someone on the side of the road or will you spend time with a child who needs some extra attention or anyone who needs some attention so you have to have compassion Sometimes people are only looking for compassion, someone to listen to them. And then the second one involves extravagant giving. But first of all, let's go back. So look at this picture. So the Good Samaritan comes along. This man is beaten, bloody, probably can't move. And you know, to in today's time, we'll probably look at him and ask or wear some sanitizer before we even go over to him. So sometimes people will look at people and just go back because they think they're nasty or dirty or, or whatever. But the Good Samaritan stopped. He stopped and helped the man. He poured oil on his, uh, he poured wine, his costly wine on his bruises as an astringent, and the oil soothed it. And then he took the time to manage it. Now, how many, are you willing to have your day interrupted? I know some days I'll be going to work, and if there's an accident, even if something is wrong, I'd be off my square because I have the, the tendency to not want to be late. What about an interruption? Are you willing to have your, your time interrupted? Are you willing to stop and spend some time with a child who needs that extra attention? And what about giving? That Samaritan put him on his donkey, took him to the inn, and paid two days' wages just for the innkeeper to take care of him. And then told him when he get back, anything that he needed, what a good person that is, anything that, you, that he needed, take care of him. And when I come back, I'm going to pay you what you know what 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 you're owed for taking care of the man. But he took the time to take him there and to make sure he was okay before he moved before he went on his way. And that's something for someone to take their time to make sure you're okay. Have him taking the time, even though when someone needed you to make sure they was okay before you, you know, before you left them before you moved on. And again, that time factor. He took time out of his journey. Like he said, surely he had some people waiting on him. He was on a trip, so he had he was on a, he was on a journey. But he took the time, interrupted his journey, did not stop him from stopping and helping this man who was laying out on the road. He, you know, this man was beaten, and he was a, a Samaritan. I think this man was a Jew, and they don't even get along. But it doesn't matter who it is when you have compassion and goodness in your spirit, you will help anyone. It doesn't matter because we all need help at some time. But that was a wonderful thing that that Samaritan did. He was willing to let all that get interrupted. How did other people pass them back? You know, way from the other side of the road. There was a, a priest and a Levite. They on the other side looking at the man laying there, barely being the head. Went on the other side, and I see it all the time. Where people would just pass by people, they were even asking for a cup of coffee or a sandwich. They would just pass by. You know, so that's, um, I just love the way the, Sar the Samaritan took the time to help this person. And we have one more um, where we can learn about the goodness of the Samaritan. See who's going to read this. This is Lily. I had you. This is the other Lily on the iPad. Okay. The Good Samaritan, Luke 10 25 through 37. Three, fruit of, fruit of the Spirit, goodness involves investment of time. 
The good Samaritan interrupted his journey and took care of the man at the end overnight. He had obligations to fulfill and people waiting at the end of his trip. Yet he tended to the man overnight, perhaps to make sure the man was stable before he continued on his journey. Not only that, he promised to return and settle up the account with the innkeeper on his way back through. In conclusion, to demonstrate the spirit of goodness by being selfless involves four things. One, we must show compassion to others. Two, we must be willing to give to help them in time of need. Three, it involves being willing to let my time be interrupted or my plans may be changed or delayed. Four, it involves acknowledging that I must invest the time needed to help someone. Thank you. So those are the four things that we can take away. And if you're a person who was already, you know, to have goodness in your heart, I'm pretty sure you do it all the time. But these are just some of the things that the Good Samaritan showed us, that a person with goodness, this is what they would do. And I see people doing it all the time. And it, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, heartwarming thing. Uh, so our last slide said, the fruit of the spirit of goodness, growing in the fruit of the spirit. Who has God used to show goodness to you in your life? Of the three characteristics of the Good Samaritan, compassion, extravagant giving, and generous investment of time, which is most difficult to for you to show? Journal your thoughts. Pray for the help you need to grow in the spirit of goodness. In 2 Peter 3.18, says, for the sake of grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen? Amen. 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 Next week's lesson. Amen. 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 Of the fruit of the spirit next week is faithfulness. So I will have a blessed week, everyone. Be safe. And demonstrate the spirit of goodness to someone this week. Are you recording, Carol? Yes. Okay, all right. You ready, Joy? We can't hear you. Unmute yourself. All right, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let, let us pray. Father God, first of all, we come to say thank you, Lord. We come to say thank you for being the thank God you. that you are, Heavenly Father. We know that you sit high and you look low, Heavenly Father. And we come this morning to praise you, to lift you up, and to glorify your name, Heavenly Father, because you've been so good to us. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, Heavenly Father. We humble ourselves towards you, Heavenly Father. We bow down towards you, Heavenly Father, for being the God that you are, that we could come to the throne, lift you up, glorify your name, and magnify your name, Heavenly Father. Because we know that you are God, and God all by yourself. We love you, Lord. We need you, Lord, in a mighty way, Heavenly Father. As we Thank you for this class, Heavenly Father. We thank you for uh, the teacher, Mary, Father God, that she taught a good class this morning, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all the comments that was out, Father God. We know that things are going on in this world, Heavenly Father. Good things and bad things, Father God. But we must remember that you will always, you will always, Heavenly Father, lead us and guide us, Father God. You will order our steps and which way to go, Father God. That's why we ask we should keep our mind on you, Lord. Keep our eyes on you, Father. Let our ears hear from you. Speak to us, Lord. When you speak, you lead us and guide us, Heavenly Father. And that's what we need from you. In this corrupt, corrupt world, as we journey through this corrupt world, Father God, lead us and guide us. Order our steps, Father God. Keep us in a mighty way. We lift up the prayer request, Father God. You know what all things that's going on, Heavenly Father. The sick, Father God, and shut in, Heavenly Father. Those that need surgeries, Heavenly Father. Touch right now, bless right now, heal right now, in the name of Jesus, because you see it as, and it shall be given. Seek, and we shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. So we go ask in the name of Jesus. We're going to seek in the name of Jesus, and we're going to knock in the name of Jesus, Father God. 
You know all things, Father God. Heal, Lord. Heal the bodies, Father God. Mm -hmm. Keep them, Father God, under your wings of protection, Father God. Touch right now. Bless right now. In a mighty way, Heavenly Father. We lift up the doctors and the nurses, Father God, that's working with the human bodies, Father God. Give them the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding and working with the human body, Heavenly Father. You know all things. You know what's going on, Lord. Touch right now. Bless right now in a mighty way, Heavenly Father. And Father God, let the scientists find a vaccine, Father God, for the coronavirus, Heavenly Father, to save innocent lives, Father God. But we know who our vaccine is. Jesus is our vaccine, Heavenly Father. Touch right now. Bless right now. Anoint right now, Father God. Keep the police officer, fire department, paramedics. Touch them in a mighty way, Father God. Lead them and guide them, Heavenly Father. Let your will be done. Not our will, but thy will shall be done, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, as we go on our way, we pray for traveling grace, Heavenly Father. All those that's on the road with us today, Father God, lead us and guide us, protect us. Keep us under your wings of protection, Heavenly Father. And we thank you and we praise you until next time we meet again. We love you. We need you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.